As you know, my name is Kainson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a complete API in Python step by step with no step skips. And we are going to build this API and actually test it and make it return list of user objects. And we are going to be storing our data in SQLite, and we are going to be using a Python library called Flask and SQLite tree. So this is step by step for actually doing this and I've made this step by step and also put all the bits of codes we are going to be doing today and it's actually something very easy to do. We are going to serve up, serve up an API that's going to display a list of users like what you see here. What you see right here is an API response but we are going to be doing this same thing and fetching data from a database and also doing get post put and delete as you can see right here. Make a get request, get by ID, post request, update and delete. So let's go ahead to get started and I'm using PyCharm as the IDE we are going to be using to build in this API in Python. I'd like to recommend you subscribe to my channel by hitting on the subscribe button below so that you don't miss any update from me. And also if you find this video to be informative, please uh, like and um, leave me a comment as well. And if you have challenges, do leave me a comment as well. So let's go ahead to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to create a Python file. So this uh, our IDE and this IDE, as I mentioned, is PyCharm. And I'm going to simply, when you create a new I, uh, um, file, a, a new project in PyCharm, you can always run it, and it just gives you this main high PyCharm, which is what we have here. But I'm going to actually delete uh, this file so that we can actually start from the scratch. So I'm going to delete this file. So I'm going to start by creating the class that's going to be that's going to represent the student object here because we want to store lists of students. So I'm going to say new Python file and I'm going to call it student. Uh, Python convention is to use lowercase as file names. So this student is going to have first name, last name, and department, and it's also going to have a UUID to represent the unique ID. And it's also going to have to string method or string method that returns a string representation of the student object. So I'm going to simply copy and paste. Uh, I hope you don't mind I'm just copying and pasting because that is going to save us a lot of time. Okay, so this is basically it. So if you want to write like return first name, get first name, get last name, you can actually make up this class if you want, but that is not the objective of this tutorial. Okay, so we have our student class now. The next thing we want to do is to write the API class. So I'm going to call the file for the API. I'm going to call it um, student API. So I'm going to call it student API. So this file will be responsible for connecting to the database, uh, creating the, the endpoint. We're going to be defining the route, like the slash, slash post, slash get, and all the routes we need to, to perform our crude operations. Okay, so we have to do the imports. We are going to import a number of things. So I'm going to also copy and paste because I'm not going to waste any time. So I'm going to copy all of this, everything actually. So I have a function I created here, I call it go home. Now this function, uh, go home actually, uh, so we have from Flask import. So we actually need to install Flask. So just go to your terminal and use pip install Flask right so that's what i specified here so pip install flask and that should take care of it okay if it is not successful the error will go away after a few seconds let's see um yeah so it goes away so what happens in this go home when you go to uh this function is going to simply create connect to the database if you have the, uh, the command C is equal to SQL3, just connect, specify the name of the database and dot console. So this is going to create a database and return the console to that database. And this console, we, are, we can actually use it to execute the SQL statement like create tables and so on. Now we want to create a route, a route that says slash, uh, that has the definition for slash and if you go to slash, it goes to the home page or displays just a welcome message. And we also need to start a web server as well that's going to serve up the pages. So first let's create this route and then I'm going to start up the web server. I'm going to show you the code to start up the web server. Now up the trout because we are creating a Flask application at this point right here. So this is the syntax to create a Flask application that helps you to 
do uh, to serve up uh, a, uh, API requests. So here we have app the route. As app the route, you specify the route and specify the method, and then you specify the function that's going to be executed when a user visits that route. So the basic basic uh, routing that we are already did in Node.js or we did in uh, Spring Boot, you can check out that tutorial. So Python is actually the easiest way to actually build uh, APIs from what I found out uh, from my research. So at this point, you have welcome to the API. However, the web server is not started. So in that case, it will not run. So I think I have the code for the web server right here. So the web server uh, simply say app.run and specify the port you want to run this server on. So I'm going to, normally you need to specify this code at the very end of the functions, right? So it runs at port 8888, but I like using 8800. And now I'm going to save everything and we are going to run this application. So let's save all and run it. You simply right click and say run. So once you click on run, you can see if we refresh here, we should be able to see, okay, when we visit the slash, then it's going to execute the code to connect to the database and create the database. By the way, there is an application I want to show you. This application is called DB Browser for SQLite. This DB Browser for SQLite is actually for managing SQLite database. So I recommend you download and install. So at this point, I'm going to go to this URL and it says internal server error. Uh, let's see. Um, is able to complete? Let's see. Why is it giving this? It says maximum recursion dex reach. Okay. Okay. So I think the problem should be coming from here. So I'm just, I'm just going to take out this. Um, so I'm going to take out that and um, I'm going to run this application again. So I'm going to terminate. Now I've taken this out and I'm going to uh, run this application. So let me just run and I'm visiting the route and now it says welcome to student API. However, the go home have not actually executed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this code right here. I'm going to take this code. I'm going to simply copy it and put it um, right here. So that in that case we have only one function that is executes when the user goes to uh, go home. So I've, I've made the function to be just one function at this time. That, that function is go home and if a user goes to slash, it goes to the home page and the database should be created. So let's try it out to see. First, I'm going to save everything and I'm going to run this application one more time. And if I go here, it goes, welcome to the student API. And I think by now we should have, we should have the student DB created at this point, okay? Okay, so if you use DB browser, the application I showed you, you should be able to open this database. Now it's actually containing one table with no records at all. So let's go for the get request. I'm going to simply, this is a get request. I think it should be, maybe a get request is going to simply, uh, simply replace the, uh, the query. Instead of create a table, it simply select from the table and return everything from that table. So let me copy and paste this function and then we discuss it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm going to paste it right here. So here it says, um, up the route, the normal route you specify, then connect your database, execute the fetch, uh, get all, and then return it as a JSON right here. So I'm going to actually, uh, actually, you should have, you should be students because that's a, a standard, right? So I'm going to save everything and I'm going to. Uh, restart this application, I'm going to terminate and then I'm going to run it one more time. And this time, if we go to slash students, we should be able to have an empty, an empty list of items because there is nothing in there. Now, C that is a cute select start from students, data is for the C that's special. I think this is fairly intuitive for you, so I don't think I'm going to spend time to explain it. This is something for you to play around with and see that is actually very easy to get things done with Python. 
compared with other technologies. I'm going to paste the code for get by, by ID. Uh, this is get by ID is about exactly the same thing, but in this case you have fetch one, and I I, I kind of modify the the uh, the JSON um, uh, 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 the JSON code to be JSON that comes. That's when also return the JSON. Okay, now comes the interesting parts. If I if we want to make a post request, this is very very important. We want to make a post request. It's very important. You need to pay attention to it. I'm going to paste it as well, and then I'm going to explain it to you as well. Now you want to pay attention to to the URL parameter. You also want to now not the URL parameter. The URL parameter is for the post request. You want to pay attention to how we fetch the student records coming in from the request body. The request body is assumed to be coming as a form data, right? So it's, it's coming as a form data, so we are going to fetch the fields from the form, the first name, last name, and department, and we are going to create a student object. The ID of the student is automatically created in the constructor in the student class. So I added the spring statement here so that we simply we just know uh, see how the student um, whether the student actually is received in the request body in this function. All right. So I'm going to uh, this time. Okay. Let's see. So in this case, if you are making a post request, you have to do db dot commit. Take note, and I'm going to return the last uh, the ID of the last item uh, in So I'm going to terminate. And now I'm going to save everything and let's run it. And this time we will be making a post request, but we are going to be making a post request using a client. I'm going to be using Postman. Uh, Postman is a free uh, API client uh, uh, UI that you can use to make a rest request to, rest request to endpoint. So this is Postman and the URL is get, uh, we are going to make it a post request and the URL for post is add students, okay? Add students is the URL for the post, so I'm going to say add, add students and the body of the request at this time is going to be form. You can set, if you set it to none or to form data or to raw, this is for JSON, you actually should set it to x, www form URL encoded and specify the fields that you want to add. In this case, we, are, we want to add the first name, the last name and the department. And this is the values at this point. So John Doe, uh, the department is driver. And let's, let's execute to see if that value works. So I'm going to say send and it returns one, right? Okay, let's try to enter kinds of um, this is my surname and my department should be computer science for instance uh, computer science and I'm going to send now take note that the ID return this time is 2 how do we know if it works I'm going to simply go to students uh, the URL to get all the students is going to be students and I'm going to make a get request at this point and I'm going to, I'll send it and you see that it returns two records because it is added. If we also go here, go to this place and go to the URL in our browser and enter students, you also see that it returns the two records we inserted and that's how to make, uh, create, the end, create the endpoint for post. Now the update is about the same thing. So I'm going to simply copy and paste and allow you to figure it out because I cannot be doing anything, everything um, for you, uh, just like that. You need to also be, um, uh, you need to also be creative. But what I want you to take note of is how we specify the ID of the students to be updated like this. And you have the, the same ID specified in the URL parameter the same idea you have as the argument the function and the same way we extract the student record we now write an SQL query as well and finally we have the delete uh, operation so I'm going to copy and paste as well 
So this is right there in my website. I'm going to actually be stopping here. Just before I go, I'm going to just show you this nice application I told you about. VB Browser for SQLite. You can use it to simply open your database. And I'm going to go to where I have my database. It should be in Kyneton. Um, the directory where we have this expansion projects API demo and have the student DB which we created and you can see the students table and if I browse you can see that we have the two records we inserted just now is right there so I'm going to be stopping here uh, because this is quite clear there is nothing to explain about it uh, later on I'm going to now show you how to use Thinkar in Python to build an API uh, to build a UI to actually display these uh, records on a uh, on a page. Also, I'm going to show you how to also use uh, Django or other uh, web framework to actually build a UI to also display these records on a web page. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. This kind of motivates me to make this lesson for you. And also leave me a comment, like and share this video. Connect with me on my social network profile. I remain kind of the genius, and I'm always there for you.